Hello everybody, welcome back to Safa's Unscripted of yet another episode, um, episode casual, you the one that keeps track of all the episodes. 112. 112. Crazy, 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 crazy. But um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exciting episode, I think there's a lot of different opinions that are going to come out of this episode. Unfortunately, we might not hear Brett's opinion because um, we actually... We don't know where he is again. <laughs> he just is a busy guy, but he's missing in action. So we might be at hope he's, To be fair, yeah. he might be prioritizing yeah. mental and physical health, which is fair enough. Yeah, hundred percent. So just fingers crossed, he's good, which I'm sure he is. Um, anyways, we're going to be chatting about um, the box side that they have announced to face the Wallabies. And um, before we get into the team, just remember, guys, we really appreciate you. We appreciate everything you do for this channel, the interactions, a last episode, a lot of interactions there. We really appreciate it. So just continue to like, subscribe, share the video with your friends, you know, try and grow this awesome sport that we all love. Um, and we just here yeah, as to talk to you guys really and share. That's actually some of the, the best thing them. about this channel. It's just like because we are just fans talking about it, like our opinions are no better than than the ones that we see in in the comment section you know so that's why it's always lovely um replying to those comments reading the different opinions because we know experts at it we're just talking about it from from the fans perspective so i love it that we have a utterly what's it engaging com community where people just like say what they feel you know there's yeah, no exactly. filters out here i see a lot of comments like in the hidden in in review or whatever bro i accept them all it's it's free speech go for it like i don't care just just if you want to talk personally against us go for it i mean it is what it is yeah but we it do is what it is yeah 100 percent um but okay so before i read the team out or not we'll go step by step just looking at that team i'm sure most people are watching this video have seen it what are your thoughts on 10 changes i mean crazy um, yeah crazy is is the correct word i i understand right and i might rant a bit because i i'm not supporting all of it okay first and foremost right and i know there's a lot of people that are like excited to see the these boys play right like it is guys that are on form it is exciting names that you want to see but for me 10 changes too much too much uh, it feels like we've put out a charity team a team that that we want to put out against the likes of Portugal. I'm not saying we won't get the job done. It's not about getting the job done for me on, on this one. I know we will get the job done. We should be beating the Wallabies. But it's a it's the bigger picture, in my opinion. And I like I made a video about this on, on my TikTok, and people are like, trust Rossi, trust Rossi, right? Obviously, I trust Rossi and I have faith in Rossi, but I'm allowed to question some decisions, exactly. right? Yeah. Like it, it, it does not make sense to me. Like... When, when we are chasing the rugby championship like we are and you have a bad record in Australia and you saw how lacklustre our second half was at, at, a, at a certain point and your captain comes out after the game and he says, listen, we know we totally dropped off. You don't go and put out a team with 10 changes. You don't. That, like, that kind of feels like we, we, have, we are taking this Australian team for granted. We do realize the second half, we only scored two tries and they scored one, albeit we, we were at 13 players. We were not as dominant in that second half, right? Yeah. And we'll, I'll go into depth with, with what I'm saying and to, to have people understand my, my point of view when we talk about the squad. But overall, um, yes, am I excited to see, see some of those players? Yeah. Am I happy with it overall? No. I think too many changes, too many. Ten is way too many. Mm. So, look, I think I've had a mix. Like, I'm with you. I'm I'm on mixed emotions with this. Um, from a, trying to see it from uh, from a Springbok perspective, um, I, I've said on the group. I personally feel this is just a game, and 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 like we said, we want when we spoke about this review of the rugby championship, or sorry, the preview, we said we wanted the Springboks to take it very seriously. We didn't want them to experiment much, and we wanted them to just go out there with their strongest side six times and win six times, you know? Um, and it's clear that they've gone with an experimental side here, and I think the reason they've done it is just purely on the basis that I'm hoping that it's because they want to test 
guys that haven't been tested. I mean, some of these guys have only been tested against Portugal, you know. Um, and he wants to, Rusty wants to test these guys to see can they hang with the bigger boys, you know. I'm not saying Australia are the bigger boys at the moment, but they are in the top 10 teams in the world and we are playing them away. Um, and I just think it's perform or, you know, it could be goodbye from the, from a Springbok perspective, yeah. you know. I, I'm not taking the excuse at all of we are resting players at all. I'm not mm. I'm not having it. We had yeah. three weeks break, right before this this started. We played one game, literally one game. Now we giving them a rest, and then we have, so they have a break, and then another break, and then they're only playing the All Blacks, right? Mm. So those guys have one game in about two months or a month, whatever, right before they take on the All Blacks. Like, that is not good enough. Like, what are we resting them for? Like, we want to build our chemistry to the maximum point before we take on the All Blacks. That's that's what I'm saying, right? Like, yeah. I, I do not understand it. And then when, when, when I hear this thing about we're going to give guys game time, what does game time matter if it's not in a team that you're ever going to play with again, right? Like, yeah. where's the experience to hold it together? Like, if you look at it from, from the 1 to 5, let, let's let's start with this, with the this yeah. squad. I want to see Jan Hendrik Vessels. I want to see Juan Grobler. I want to see Thomas the Toy. Um, maybe not as much Salman Murat, to be fair, um, just because I think there's better locks. And I want to see Ruan Orkia, right? But I don't want to see them all playing the same thing. I want to see Salman Murat partner the likes of Ivan Etzebet or Franco Mostert or Peter Steff to Toy. Obviously, there's injuries there. I can understand some of that. If you want to play Ruan Orkia, you play Ivan Etzebet with him because that's who you will pr- partner if he plays, right? Yeah. I don't want to see Jan Hendrik Vessels, um, Grobler, and Thomas De Toy all play together because they're not going to play together when, when it comes to the big games that are actually going to be needed. I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing Thomas De Toy play with Oxenche on the other side and Bongi, for instance, through the middle. I'm not saying these guys are not going to do the job. That's what I mean. Mm. But they have to build that team chemistry. Like that is what annoys yeah. me. The fact that there's zero chemistry. So this game time is literally useless. That's how it feels. Just like run on the field. Yeah. So I saw something today and it got me thinking. Um, do you not maybe think that maybe this side was announced a long time ago? This was the plan all along. And maybe this team specifically has been training like that. You know, together for a while because they knew this was coming. Do you not think that helps at all? I would not be surprised at all, but that doesn't change my perspective on it because yeah. my, my 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 point of view is purely backed on when we play big games. If there's an injury, can this guy slot in? Know how to play with the other guys? Not can yeah. he slot into this team because this team will hardly ever play again. Like hardly ever play together again. I want to see yeah. those boys get game time in the partnerships that they will be in if they are needed for, for big games. I understand you need to give guys game time. I don't have an issue. I'm proud of these guys for getting into that Springbok lineup, getting getting their start as a personal achievement. Great. Like I'm, I'm mm. not knocking them at all and saying they don't deserve to be there. I'm mm. just thinking like further than that, when we build our partnerships and build our chemistry and stuff, you probably want that experienced head there to keep it, to keep it going that understands what is needed of his partner in that role that can help him throughout the game. You get what I mean? Not yeah. two guys just standing there that have been on the training field. Like, I'm mm. not worried about us dropping this game. That's not at all my worry. So you get what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Whether, so whether this, this side was decided literally two minutes ago or two months ago, the, the fact of the matter stays the same. That's yeah. my whole perspective on it. Okay, so... Well, if, if we look at tight five, it literally goes Jan Henrik Vessels at one, Jan Krobler at two, Thomas Toy three, Salman Murat captain at four, and Ruan Nokia five lock. Now, the issue with that tight five, in my opinion, is both locks. I don't see them as dominant carriers. Um, Not even close. Ruan Nokia is a Franco Mostert. He's a, he's a workhorse. He does dirty work, a lot of tackles. But carrying is not his strength. You know, he's not the biggest lock. He's just that lock that does dirty work. And then you have Murat, who we've all had our, our, our opinions on. Um, and look, I think we, we kind of get the idea that this guy has a, a future in the spring box. If, if, that, if he's captaining the side with Peter Steff in the side, yeah. you know, like, look, I'm, your, I'm in the side. Um, so... Yeah, look, I don't think he's the enforcer 
that that, that we really need. I, I, I am still struggling to to grow on it, but you know he we obviously to... want him to flourish. Absolutely, we just we just calling it on face value. Like we can only judge on what we've what yeah. we've seen. So we yep. need to see a Murat carry hard this weekend. We need some Murat that's an enforcer, and you know maybe Rasi can get that out of him. But I just find players struggle to kind of chase change their player personality. If that makes sense, you know you have an identity, yeah. and he's just not that physical lock. If you get what I'm saying. Do you, but, do you, I've I've got much less of an issue with the back line when when we get to that. But with the forwards alone, and I want to stop at that at the first five because I'm pretty satisfied with the with the Lucys that we picked because I think that's the perfect example. Mark van Staren's played a lot. He's played a lot with Peter Steff, and they helping Elric Lowe who's in a new yeah. position. That's that's yeah. kind of what I've been mentioning the whole time. Like, why can't the whole team be that? Just like one, two, three guys that like gets put into the team of the experienced blokes. Um, do you feel like, this is kind of how I, I feel. Obviously, as I mentioned, I don't think we'll lose this game all of a sudden. But all of a sudden, you've given Australia a bit of a chance. You've kind of give, stuck out a pinky to them and say, listen, we're going to give you a very inexperienced team, albeit we have the experience on the bench, right? But if you can do damage at the start against this team, right, that, that doesn't have all the coordination, that knows they aren't necessarily first-team players, you can go out and, and cause some damage, like... As I said, I don't doubt the result. I, I, I really trust these boys because they are good players. This is never in doubt that these guys are on form and they are great players. But, but it's a different ball game, you know, because yeah. the, the Wallabies aren't going to do the same. They know what it's like to play at, at that international level now. Uh, do you kind of think we just dangled a little carrot in front of their face with, with this type of line uh, lineup? Yeah, look, absolutely. I think I, it's... I don't want to use the word disrespectful because if you look at that team on face value, like you say, they are bloody good players and it shows the depth that we have. But like you said, there is an experience there. And what we are doing is we're saying to the Wallabies, listen, we challenge you now, right? We'll put an inexperienced, inexperienced side out. Let's see how you respond, you know? So Rassi backs these guys. And Australia, listen, Australia have the right to feel like they are being disrespected in the sense that I mean how much uh, different how much different is this to what French did the France did when they traveled to Argentina? Different. It's not it's not much different, you know. I was like uh, we kind of know these players and we, we know they they they're good enough. Um yeah. but it's still it's still a yeah, big risk. But it's and, the and, same and, as the French. They probably believe those are the talented young boys that they are sending. And obviously they got the result against Argentina in that first game. But the other teams don't know it, right? Like you just feel like when you when you send your boys to go and play, you you want to play the big names. Like that is, that's what it's yeah. all about. This is what the this big tournaments are all about. Yeah, and, and and naturally, naturally, right? As a as a player, you know, you you when you see a lineup like that getting named, and you don't see an Eben Etzebet starting, in, and so on. I'm not saying that these guys. They still have a lot to prove is what I'm trying to say. So the Wallabies yeah. might look at this and go, that gives us a bit of confidence, you know. We can get yeah, one up on these guys. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and, and that's the thing, right? So you're giving them a sniff and now what the job of the spring box is now they have to shut their confidence down and say, listen, you know, we may be inexperienced, but we're ready for this stage. So, yeah. I mean, if we saw, we saw how great th this team can kind of perform against Portugal, right? But we also saw that this team dropped 17 points against Portugal, you know? Mm. So, like, it, it, it's not all doom and gloom. As I said, these guys are yeah. great. These, these guys are great players. They deserve their Springbok call-up. It's not It's not about that. It's, it's just like, it feels like we are kind of underrating the Wallabies team or we're thinking of them at, of, as, as pushovers while we know our record there isn't great. We saw what happened in the second half. Like it just doesn't make sense. But let's move on to the Lucys. Yeah. It's, it's fun. I mean, I, I mean, I think yeah, circle. yeah. I think <coughs> Lucys. <coughs> sorry, it's winter in South Africa, and it just always hits me at this time. Um, Marku van Staden, Peter Steff, Ulrich Lowe. Um, I think we are happy with that. Obviously, yep. Peter Steff and Ulrich Lowe, I think, are kind of going to be regular starters. We'll see what happens when Jasper Visa comes back, because um, yep. I don't know what's going to happen there. But Ulrich did played really well in the last game. If he has a good game now, I think he kind of 
says to us, you know, listen, I'm ready for the spot, you know. Um, yeah. So anything you would have changed in that six? Or no, no, no. I, I was just going to add I mean, to the, why, why that's yeah. the perfect lineup is is because of the 5-3 split. We, mm. we know Sia never plays a full game. So with the fact that we went 5-3, Marco van Staden obviously can put in more minutes than than Sia. I, I would think um, he's more match for the. He fits the role better. We've got a now we've got a fetcher on the field from the start. He's also a ball carrier. Um, so yeah, that 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 is a perfect. We have two, um, yeah. That is that Three. is the perfect. Lock yeah, sorry. Replace. Yeah, sorry. I was just saying. Looking at the fetches, I think Jan Hendrik Vessels does a job there if he really wants to. Jan Froberlock can do a job there, and yeah. Marco van Staden. So that we sort it there. But like you said, it's five three. Five three is good because I think we're moving to the back line now. I think this back line is very interesting, and we could see a lot of variations when the bench comes on. So, yeah, we'll leave the Lucys. I think we're happy there. We'll look at the halfbacks. So Mornay van der Berg at nine, and of course Sasha at ten. Um, happy for Mornay van der Berg. Do not understand why he's there. I do, I for the life of me, I do not understand it. Like so, I think. The way I'm trying to look at it and the way I'm understanding it is I think if you look at our if you look at our um, our nines you have, and, our, and our cemented nines that we've had, you know, it's it's Fuff and Quibbles, right? Um yeah. Hendrix has come in, but please let's leave him there. Um anyways, I think what we're trying to do now is we're trying to, I don't think Quibbles is gonna be ready for the next World Cup. I don't you can I could be wrong, but I don't think he may be the, the Quibbles we know. So I think we're kind of just trying to identify here, and Grant will get his his chance soon come. Um, but we're trying to identify who's going to be the nine to take the Springboks forward. You know, I think Fuff slowly going out the door, Quibus is slowly going out the door. So now we kind of need to test each nine and see whether it be Hendrixa, uh, Grant Williams, Martin van der Berg, whoever it is, and we kind of need to just say, look, who can who can raise their hand and who can kind of play the role that Rusty wants. Now, I, yeah. I I personally would have started with Grant. Uh, yeah. I, I, De yeah. Grant definitely deserves his start. He had one start and he got knocked out. After yeah. the performances that he's put up, how good he's been for the Sharks and for the Springboks, he needs to start a game. I can't understand why Morgan van der Berg gets a start above him. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. But then the other thing is, like, we all know, objectively, Kubus Reinach is our best nine for, mm. for this type of yeah game that we want to play, right? He didn't play against Ireland. He comes back, he has a shaky game. We can agree on he had a shaky game against uh, Wallaby <coughs> last weekend. But he gets one game and then out again. Like, how is he supp supposed to perform if he just gets one game, one in one in the blue moon, right? Like, was his performance not good enough? I understand that we maybe want to see Krappi, but how does he get to start over Grant Williams? How long does Grant Williams get to play? Like it does, I, it doesn't make sense to me. Like Grant Williams hasn't had enough experience as a as a Springbok to to um, start necessarily or play the whole game. So you kind of want Reinach there, right? As as security, mm -hmm. whether it's to start or to finish the game. Now you have Moran van der Berg. You have you you take him off and you, and you sit him with Grant Williams. Where like have Grant Williams play if he struggles, you can take him off and put on Kobus Reinach who you trust, right? But now Krappi struggles. You take him off and you put Grant Williams on, and it's like, okay, well, nothing is nothing is sorted. If you get what I mean, mm. like, yeah, I, I just don't understand, like, how Kubis Reinach gets one game. Like, does yeah. that does that automatically mean we are going to play against the All Blacks now again, and it's going to be Faf de Klerk and Andre Pollard once again? Is, is, is yeah. that what this means? Uh. Then I might as well just watch the game with my eyes closed and hope for the best. Like the, the, yeah. the, we kicked I the ball you. more last week than we did against Ireland, yet our attack was so much better because when we try to attack against Ireland, we don't have enough attacking threat in that 19, as I mentioned mm. last time when we spoke. Faf offers yeah. you nothing on attack, and Andre Polarov also offers you nothing on attack with the running rugby. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it is a strange one, um, and I think... Hopefully, Mone van der Berg has a game where he impresses, you know. Um, yeah, he's a great because, player. Great. Yeah, great. like, if we can find, uh, personally, um, if, I, if I'm looking to the very far future, and I'm saying by far, I mean maybe two and a half to three years away from now, 
uh, I, I'm kind of looking at Mornay van der Berg and, and Grant Williams as our two nines, if that makes sense. I don't think Papier is going to get another go. I just don't. Yeah. Even though he's impressed, I just don't think you'll get another go. Can, so, can I quickly put it in perspective for you, the way that yeah. I see it? right? Because it's much easier doing it with the All Blacks. When you have Aaron Smith, the experienced guy, and you have um, Cam Roygaard, as your other, as your as your guy on the bench, but Cam Roy God doesn't have an have have a ton of experience playing for the All Blacks. All of a sudden, Aaron Smith not peaked, and they put in Finley Christie to start the game, with Cam Roy God still just on the bench. Like how do, how does that's how it plays out in my mind? Like I'm not saying more than a is bad, but <coughs> like, how does that make any sense? Yeah, you feel for you you feel for Grants and you feel for Purvis uh, because. Yeah. Personally, I don't think Quivis's game was all his fault. If that makes sense, I I do think like I, yeah, I said, very up and down, but up yeah. and like I just think like ball that was given to him was very messy at scrum and rough time. Um, it's a bit unfair, but at the same time, he could have done better. But yeah. like that's that's what I'm saying. But anyway, we'll, we'll move on. Um, we'll move to the centers. Look, I'm at twelve and Jesse Creel at thirteen. Um, I like you heard of yeah? I mean, it's interesting, and we heard about. Lucanio, um, training at twelve a couple of weeks ago, and um, I mean, crazy. I mean, it's going to be interesting. And this tells me this isn't going to be a very. If I look at that side, actually, I don't think it's a very physical side. Do you get what I'm saying? No, like, it's, it's not. It's fluent rugby. It's, it's, that's fluent. It's, it's, that's fluent yeah, rugby. Like that, especially that background, that backline. It's very running like. So, yeah, Lucanio. I mean, to have a twelve that has the IQ of a thirteen, because if a thirteen's IQ is very, a rugby IQ is very high. Usually, so to have Jesse Creel's IQ and Lucanio Am's IQ, it's crazy. I mean, it's it's so it's insane. So I'm happy with that. And then yeah. anything you and want the to add is, to, to Lucanio's Lucanio's physicality matches up like for for a twelve as well. He's great in the defense. on his defense, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we heard about them training. Obviously, um, Estrays and still suspended. Um, mm. uh, Damien Dielinda obviously got subbed for the first time that I ever saw. Um, last week. I'm not sure if he got injured or what it was. Um, maybe they're giving him a break as well, but to be fair, like he's he's played a ton of games. He's played, yeah, right? yeah, yes. yeah, so you just want to give him a break and experiment. You've still got the foundation of the back line that was missing with the forwards that I was speaking about, because you still have Jesse Grill, you still have the experience of my people, you still have the experience of um, Cheslin Colby, and then obviously Fassi isn't new to, to this game. So and, and Lucania um, is an experienced guy. Um, yeah, that he, they've trained there. I, I'm sure he'll he'll do a job. His IQ is high enough to to do it. Um, and I would love to see how our attack differentiates a bit because he's not going to carry that ball into into mm -hmm. like first contact like David <laughs> Dillon. He's, yeah. he's not got any breaks. He does not hit the brake pedal. He just steams into there. So yeah. that will be interesting. That might actually be Jesse Creel. Like Jesse Creel just like dumb running into people. Um, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, but I wouldn't be surprised if they actually just switch like midway through yeah. the game a couple of times, to be fair. I'm not yeah, sure I mean, if Jesse can play the inside. Yeah, I mean, Jesse could play inside realistically. I mean, for the balls, I've seen him at 15 and 13, but and wing, obviously, for the spring box, we've seen, but I could pretty much play 12 if he wanted. But um, I, I generally don't think we're going to take. Whether you swap them or not, they're going to have the same role. You know what I'm saying? They're going to play yeah. similar kind of that type of role. So, and and I mean, look on you. I'm a Jesse Creel on defense. I mean, that that's that would scare me. Like those two, yeah. the thing, you know, together. I mean, look at yeah. look at Lucanio's uh, Lucanio arms um, defense again in that Portugal game. And Portugal's attack was good. Like that was fluent rug rugby. And he played inside center, outside center, and wing. He didn't care where he was. Like <laughs> that guy. That guy is good. Um, yeah. I, want, I want to bring something up um, to you. How do you think? How do you think our attack looks without kind of two playmakers on the field? Like we know how inter interchangeable Sasha and and Vili is, and how good that mm. works, right? We saw it last week, and how many times did did Vili slot in and he became first receiver or maybe even second receiver with with the creative pass from there uh, to set up obviously um, what's it Peter Steph to toy. How, yeah. how do you think? Because obviously. Fassi doesn't doesn't really have that, but he offers yeah. you so much other stuff. How do you think that affects our our attacking? <coughs> um, I think. Sorry, give me one sec. If you, if you look at the side, um, 
it's I feel like it's gonna be a different type of I think Sasha's gonna just kind of be the only playmaker we have, you know. I mean you, you, know, you could maybe get Cheslin somehow, you know, interchanging yeah, if, if that ever David comes in. For Toulon, right? Yeah, I mean I, I wouldn't say I'm just saying for certain things. I'm not saying, you know, for half <laughs> the game or yeah. Um so it, it's 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 gonna be interesting. Let's just say that. It will be a test. Um I, I feel like we might be approaching this game differently. I think we might run the ball a lot more. Um, even though we ran it quite a bit in the last game, you know, I still think yep. now we'll, we've got a team, that, especially on that back line, that will run a lot. But yeah, I mean, 11, Mapimpi, uh, so left wing Mapimpi, right wing Cheslin, and then Fussy at 15. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Fussy handles um, this this role because you know what we know as as much as people slander Villy for making errors and 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 I completely understand you know um, he's still mm. so important in the way we set up attack and the way we set up defense especially in the back three. Fussy's got a role to fill where he has mm. to organize that back three you know because that is the 15's job. So do you think he can do it or do you think this is a bit of a, a tough task for him? No, no, I, I think Australia is a good game for Fussy to play. That's why I said I don't have any issues with that. Like, it does offer you a lot in terms of the counter-attack. If our defence holds up like it did last weekend, we saw they needed to go with the eyeball. It brings you incredible eyeball security. I can't think of many better than Fussy in the air. Um, yeah. so, so, so you will have a vital role in attack and defence. And but I think you will be up for it. Um, you sh you should be fine. Like I don't see this Wallabies team the way that they're playing at the moment for him to do too many defensive activities. I don't even think Valley Larue made a tackle last weekend, and he doesn't That's make true. a lot of tackles That's anyway. True. So yeah. so yeah, I'm I'm fine with with Fassi there. Obviously, I would have liked to have rather have Valley there just because of what I've mentioned with that interchanging in in first receiver. He just gives you that bit of a creativity spark in in first receiver but i'm not too worried about about that obviously you know what my pimp is going to offer you out wide you might go up against uh Korobeti with uh Dalgunu, um or dalgunu that that went off injured so that will be an interesting mm. battle and we all know what what colby obviously offers you as well but let's go to the bench yeah uh, that's and this obviously is where, where the feistiness lies this is where we'll get a bit interested with what might happen um I think that front row on the bench, Malcolm Marks, Oxen, Chair, Vincent Koch, it is perfect. I love that bench. Like, we know they're going to come on and they're going to absolutely annihilate the Wallabies, let's be honest. I mean, yeah. that, that, that front row in scrumming is going to be, it's actually going to be scary. Uh, I, wonder, are, I wonder how much we, we will see of them. Like, are they just kind of there for security if shit eats the fan? Like, obviously, they'll at least play... Uh, 15 to 20 minutes each but do you think we, we still make the subs pretty early or do we just say okay the the starting three you guys go in do the job play your lungs out for 60 65 minutes and then you'll be yeah out. so it depends on how the game's going to be honest if, if if we comfortable i'd happily bring them off at about 60 to 65 minutes if mm -hmm. it's tight i think maybe bringing on towards 50 to 55 is is, is more of a, a realistic thing so I think it all depends on how the game's going. I think Rassi will probably want to keep his replacements, especially the forwards, off the, maybe not Kwaka, but the, that front three and, and Eben. He might want to keep those subs off for as long as possible. Um, you so, know, yeah, that... now, now that I think about it, like even if it's a tight game, I don't really th think we bring on the, the what's it? Sorry, I dropped my yeah. golf ball. <laughs> We don't, we don't bring on the front row replacement for, for quite a while because I still think we'll have that upper hand at, at scrum time and stuff. Like the, the forwards that come on, maybe Malcolm Marks, right? Because he offers you more around the around the park in terms of the breakdowns um, with, the, with with his uh, fetching and stuff. But I, I think probably even if the game's close, you can still push those, those guys for 60, 65 minutes and they'll still have a very good upper hand um, over the Wallaby scrum. So... And then you bring yeah. on those guys, say, 20-minute blitz. Don't let the Wallabies have anything. And then yeah. go from there. I, th I'm not saying that should happen. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised, even if it's yeah. surprised. Just yeah. tell so, them to keep on going. Like I said, I think it's important for a lot of these Oaks to step up and kind of prove that this is their time. Um, because if, if, if you don't perform here, I mean, 
where else would you perform if that makes sense yeah. so yeah i mean then looking at the lock replacement uh even Etzebeth, i don't think we'll see much of him uh, i really I hope Ron we knew no i really yeah, hope look, we do. <laughs> i think ron nokia will play the full the full 80. i don't think murat plays the full 80. um and and i think peter steph then becomes captain so yeah that's just my perspective i think uh ron nokia's got the gas tank to go 80 and murat is a four lock you don't often see a four lock full four lock unless you even had to be play 80 minutes you know so yeah yeah, it'll be interesting to see that. Then, obviously, yeah, Quacker okay. Smith. I mean, obviously, Quacker, that's his spot. That 20 jersey or 21, whichever jersey it is, whether it's 6 2, 5 3, or whatever, that is his jersey. And he must stay there until he retires because that's what he does. I, best. I, wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be surprised now that you now that you said it. Like, if Yevon comes on for, if Yevon comes on for Murat, Ruan Urkia goes off for Quacker, and then Peter Steph goes in. Yeah, yeah, and then Peter Steph goes in as lock because then that's kind of how you get the most experience out of it and probably the most functionality just like over the pitch because then you still have um, Marco van Staar in there. You still have um, Malcolm Marks on the field to and Quagha Smith as, as the breakdown guys. Um, and obviously, I think Alrich Lowe also offers you a bit when it comes to those that dirty work and stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that. Um Obviously, that is that is if we we see a massive future for Ben Jason Dixon, and we kind of want to test the waters a bit more with with Peter Steph at lock. Yeah, 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 hundred yeah. percent. Um, I, I mean, personally, I think when we were talking from the last game, I was saying yeah, Ben for Peter Steph five and Ben Jason Dixon at seven because yeah, I, was I don't know when ben, ben Jason Dixon is like. I mean, it's crazy. I, I, the guy had a really good game, um, so. I hope he's not out of the plans because that guy is, and, and I'm sure he's not. He's but insane. That, he's, you imagine he's having incredible. two Peter Steffs in your, in your team. That's scary, you know, yeah. scary, scary. Um, this is where things get interesting, right? So Grant Williams, obviously the nine replacement, we know that. Yeah. Now, Marnie Lubbock and Andre Pollard on the bench, two fly-offs. So we, we kind of get the idea, or we may think, that Andre will come on for... Lucanio or one of the centers or whoever and he'll play 12 and we'll see Marnie come on for maybe Fussy he'll go to 10 and Sasha may move to 15. Do you think that's what's going to happen? Yeah it's either going to be that or Marnie just comes on straight off for Sasha to give him a break and have Fussy play the full game because um, then you still have um, Pollard or Marnie to to be first receiver like Otherwise, I wouldn't. I, I don't see why why you would play Andre at the at the twelve position. Like, if you if you if you're not gonna take Sasha off, you can just keep him with with the kicking duties. Why would you yeah. want to play Andre Pollard as twelve? Like Pollard's not a twelve. I know people have been calling it like even when Alton Yankees was playing with Alton being at the ten and um, Andre Pollard playing inside center. Brain dead move in my opinion to do that, especially when you have Damien Dialenda. But obviously, mm. I, I do appreciate the experimenting in, in that regards. We we have said it before, like, if you take away the kicking duties, Marnie Lubbock is probably the best 10 that we have for the system that we want to play. Obviously, Sasha is shine. So. Sasha is the guy, bro. I'll stick yeah, by yeah, that yeah. until the day. <laughs> that's, why, that's, that's why I quickly caught it there at the end and say, yeah. said, obviously, Sasha has been shining. But you I get, get what I mean. Between like, Pollard and, 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 and uh, yeah, Marnie, it's Marnie, definitely Marnie. Day Marnie. in, day yeah. out. And I, I hated that I see so much disrespect of, of Marnie because they say, uh, it's, uh, I, have to, I have to struggle through Marnie ball again. And I'm like, dude, if you, you literally just hate Marnie because of the kicking. If you actually watch that guy play, you will see the quality that he brings. He's out of the hand kicking with both feet. He's crazy. His stepping is amazing. He's got a bullet pass on him. Like he offers you so much. He's a he's a great 10 for this system. I've seen a couple of guys say Mania has to go to 15. Uh, no, no, thank you. No, no, thank you. I've seen him there at the Bulls and I would never want to see him at the <laughs> playing yeah, that. No, 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 never. Um, yeah, but it will be I, interesting I, to see. Like, yeah, you know what? It didn't I look think, like it was firing last weekend when Pollard went to twelve. To be fair, look, I don't. I think the whole team just slowed down. So when you come off the bench to a team that's kind of comfortable and 
no, the game's done. And sometimes, you know, you can't really make an impact because, you know, the yeah. team's kind of... So we'll see. But I think the main thing here is we're going to find out a lot of answers to a lot of questions. And that is kind of important. So we'll take it at that. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to add to this or are we ready to wrap it up? Yeah, let's wrap it up. Obviously, I'm excited to still see the boys. I just yeah. have my personal opinion in, in terms of how I see this team being. Yeah. Like, I couldn't understand the selection. But obviously, I get it. It's an exciting team. It's an on-form team. These guys deserve to play. But yeah. Yeah, look, I'm with you, right? I'm, I'm with you on the fact that I would have gone very similar to last week, maybe a few changes, but like you said, with combinations. For the reason being, I just want us to go out there and win a rugby championship. Now, I'm not saying these guys can't get the job done, right? I'm sure yeah, they can, not a, but not at all. Yeah. It, is, it is a risk. That's all I'm trying to say. It is, it is a risk to say to the Wallabies here, we're giving you an inexperienced side, and they may be the Wallabies, and yes, many people may not fear them anymore. But the fact is, they are on a on a on a path with Joe Smith that will probably be positive. I, I don't doubt that he he might not get them to be the best, but he might make them a lot better. Um, and and we got to be careful of that. So you know what? I just think any side that gets hammered at home naturally hurts a wounded any any animal, you know, or any any type of yeah. team that's wounded will bounce back in some form. If not, then it's just one of those things. But, yeah, you know, I, I think that these guys have to step up because if some of them don't, like I said, it could be their last outing in a Springbok shirt unless another Italy game or Portugal game comes along. So that's just yeah. my final This kind of, kind of has the feel with, the, with that Portugal game. Like, people will say, not that they are as bad as Portugal. I'm just saying, like, it's like if they perform well, people will say, yeah, well, Wallabies, I mean. Yeah, I think like, this is a bit more credible. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, yeah. but I'm just saying, like, like you could yeah. put it down as kind of the same. Where it's yeah, like you if you play bad, I mean, you you got beat by this Wallabies team. So, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, ladies and gents, that is it for episode 112. Um, interesting selection as we've just been through. So we'll see how the boys handle this come game day we still obviously have an episode where we'll give our predictions and our match previews of both rugby championship games that will come on friday and yeah just thank you so much and we will see you guys soon so cheers bye bye, bye, bye.